Hi, when you guys go to take your road test, when you finished your pre-trip and then you finished your yard skills, just before you go to drive out over there from the training yard or wherever you're doing your training, when you go to drive out on the highway to take your road test portion of your CDL test to get your Class A license, there's a handful of things you have to remember that you have to either do or make sure that you don't do too much of or don't do too little of while you're out taking that road test portion of your test. Once you've completed the pre-trip and once you've completed your yard skills, you're gonna be required to get in the truck and prepare to leave the training yard. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to put your seat belt on and at that point, your tester is probably going to ask you to explain and demonstrate to him how you're going to do a hazmat railroad crossing stop if you have hazardous material on that truck. Now your tester is going to point out a reference area for you to use as if that's an actual railroad crossing and he's going to want you to drive up toward that for all intents and purposes imaginary railroad crossing while demonstrating and explaining to him what you would do if you actually stopped with hazmat on the truck. The reason he's going to ask you to do that while you're in the training yard is once you leave the yard, you're not allowed to physically stop at a railroad crossing on the highway because without actual hazmat on the truck, it would be illegal to stop in that situation. Yet you still have to demonstrate a knowledge of that with him. So, when he points out that area of reference to you to, for you to use as the railroad crossing, you have to pull up towards that area, explaining to him that you're going to slow down, you're gonna get all the way to the right side of the right lane, you're going, to, <clears throat> you're going to check for trains and traffic, you're going to turn your four way flashers on, you're going to stop somewhere between 15 and 50 feet from the railroad crossing. Once you stop, you're gonna check for trains and traffic once again, and you're going to make sure there's clearance before you begin to drive across that railroad crossing. And we're not talking about clearance overhead, we're talking about making sure that if there's a vehicle between you and a traffic light, let's say, on the other side of that railroad crossing, you've gotta make sure that vehicle is gone and you have clearance to drive all the way across that railroad crossing without stopping for any reason. Because if you stop with any part of that vehicle on that railroad crossing area that he's pointed out, he's going to fail you for that because it appears as if you don't understand that once you start moving, you can't stop until the entire vehicle, that's both tractor and trailer, has crossed that railroad track. Once you're sure there's clearance, you're gonna put the truck in a low gear and you're gonna leave that truck in that one low gear. And once you start driving, there's no stopping, there's no shifting gears, there's no changing lanes until the entire truck is across the railroad track. As you approach, you're going to do another train and traffic check, making sure that it's safe. You're gonna proceed across the track. When you clear the track and get to the other side, you're going to do another train and traffic check. At that point, if everything's clear, you're welcome to return to the normal flow of traffic, kill your turn signals, or turn your turn signal, or four ways off rather, and begin shifting again. If I didn't mention it, you have to turn your four ways on before you stop on the other side of the railroad crossing. Once you make it out onto the road, your road test is graded on two different Two, in two different manners, I should say. There's a point space part of your road test and there's an instant fail part of your road test. So, you get a point assessed against you every time you grind a gear in a transmission. You get a point assessed against you every time you miss a gear. And you get points assessed against you every time you skip a gear. You're only allowed a maximum of 30 points on the road test. If you accumulate 30 points, that's still a pass, but if you get so much as one point over 30, in other words, if you manage to accumulate 31 points, that is a fail. So we wanna make sure we keep that points total as low as we can. 
That's why that hazmat railroad crossing stop is so important because for every one of those, you can't explain or demonstrate correctly to him that's a point that's being assessed against you that goes against the remainder of your drive. Now he's limited to how many points he's supposed to be allowed to give you for grinding the gears and the transmission. This is provided you can actually shift the truck enough to move the truck down the road efficiently enough that you're not stopping or impeding the normal flow of traffic. If you can't shift it whatsoever and you're beating and hacking at the transmission about to destroy it, he's probably going to cancel the test and he's going to fail you at that point. However, as long as you can shift the truck enough to keep the truck moving in an efficient manner, if you get some points for grinding here and there during the entire 30 minute drive, he's limited to 10 points that he can give you for that activity. So. If you miss five gears, that's the limit to the number of points he can give you for missing a shift. And if you're skipping gears, five is the maximum number of points he can give you for missing gears or skipping gears. So, if you get 10 points for grinding, five for missing, five for skipping, that's 20 points already. So, those are the only three categories where he's limited to how many points he can give you. You want to keep those points as low as possible. He doesn't expect perfection. The drive is about 30 minutes long, so he's going to expect you to get some grinding points here and there. If you're having trouble maintaining those and keeping those low, that's one thing. Those are things that perhaps you can't overcome or you can't correct. But the other things I'm fixing to talk about Make sure that you're doing these as well as absolutely possible because then it's not going to hurt you as badly at the end of the test. So, you get a point assessed against you every time you take a turn excessively wide. And an excessively wide turn is any turn, that, any turn rather, where the tester deems you've left a car-sized space between you and the edge of the road when you complete that turn. The fear being, if you turn wide like that, people in automobiles will kill themselves to try to get around you because nobody wants to be stuck behind a big truck. If you take turns excessively crazy wide, the fear is when you bring the vehicle back into the correct lane, you will run over that automobile who's attempting to pass you. you if you're turning from a single right turn lane, you're required to end up in the right turn lane at the end of the turn. You're allowed to use as much of that roadway you're turning into to accomplish that that you need, provided the entire tractor and trailer ends up in the correct lane at the end of that turn. Most of us make big, wide, lazy turns because we get so used to doing that in an automobile. If you can't get some of the things you do in an automobile cleared out of your head, and basically if you drive an automobile incorrectly, it's probably going to cause you to drive this truck incorrectly. And because he's watching you and grading you on your performance, if you get lazy and continue to drive that truck like a lot of us do in our automobiles, you're probably going to fail because you're going to accumulate so many points at the end of the test. If you're making super wide turns during a 30 minute road test, that's a point assessed against you every time you do that. He's also allowed to give you points if you make turns excessively slowly. In other words, if you're crawling through the turn, afraid to give the truck a bit of power and take you and the truck on around the turn and get you and him on down the road safely. He'll also assess points against you if you take turns crazy fast and out of control and sling him around inside the truck. He's unlimited to the number of points he can give you for that. Along with that, if you're shifting in a turn, that's a point every time he sees you shifting while turning. The reason you're not allowed to shift while turning, you're required to keep both hands on the wheel the entire time you're making a turn. If you're shifting, if you've got one hand resting on the stick, however, or rather, while turning the wheel or palming the wheel with one hand, he's gonna hit you with a point and assess a point against your score during the entire drive. If you're doing that for an entire 30 minute drive, I almost guarantee 
that you're going to wind up with too many points at the end of the test. While you're driving, you're allowed to leave your hand on the stick shift as long as you're shifting gears, provided you're not in a turn. Once you find the gear you're going to be in for more than a few seconds, he wants to see both hands on the wheel at the 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock position. If your hands are too low on the wheel or out of position in the, on the wheel for too long a period of time during the road test, he's going to be sitting over there giving you point after point after point if you don't correct where those hands are on that steering wheel. If you like to hold the wheel one-handed right up at the top and lean on the stick like this, like a lot of us do in our automobiles, it's going to hurt you at the end of that road test. When you're making turns, he wants to see you look from one mirror to the other about every 10 to 15 seconds because the only way to determine whether that truck and trailer is centered up in your lane is to check the mirrors on both sides. Do not, however, drive down the road doing this because now you're obviously not looking forward enough. He wants to see you start in one mirror, take a glance out the windshield, and then look in the other the whole time you're driving the truck. If you're not looking in the mirror enough, he can assess points against you on your test. There's an unlimited number of points he can give you for that, okay? <clears throat> when you're approaching an intersection, that's any intersection. He wants to see you look left and right six different times. Twice as you approach, twice as you go through the intersection, and then twice in your mirrors as you exit the other side of the intersection. Now, don't get me wrong. Few of us are going to be diligent enough to do that as much as we absolutely need to. But he needs to see that you're cognizant of the fact that you're checking those mirrors enough and checking traffic from the side and intersections enough that he feels that you're safe enough to allow you to drive that truck. Yes, your test is based on points, but that's not the entire story. It's up to him to decide whether you're safe enough on that highway to be out there on that highway, and it has nothing to do with your points. So, let's see here. When you make a turn, he expects to see you signal for a turn with your turn signal. If you don't signal enough for the turn, he's gonna hit you with points for it. When you complete the turn, most of the time the turn signals do not cancel themselves. Make sure when you complete the turn, you reach up and manually cancel that turn signal because if you don't, he's gonna hit you with points for that every quarter mile, every half mile, every three quarters of a mile because part of completing the turn is reaching up and canceling that turn signal. If you're used to making rolling stops or California stops like some people will do, if you roll up on a stop sign or you roll up on a red light and you slow down only and make the turn like some of us will do in our automobile, that's going to be an instant fail because anything that would normally get you a traffic citation is going to cause you to fail during that road test. If some of you guys aren't aware of this, if that light is red or there's a stop sign, you're required to come to a complete and full stop then make sure that there's not no oncoming traffic, rather there is no oncoming traffic, and that it's safe to put that truck back in the gear you need and proceed to drive away. You're gonna be required to do a roadside stop start during your road test. You've gotta demonstrate that correctly. If you don't demonstrate that correctly, he's gonna assess a point against you for every part of that you don't do. You're required to stop off the road on the shoulder of the road where he's gonna indicate that he wants you to do that. And you have to take that truck and trailer combination off the road early enough that you're nice and straight and parallel with the roadway when you get stopped. Because if you're not used to driving a vehicle that's essentially 60 feet long, if you wait too long to take the vehicle, excuse me, off the road, your trailer is still sitting in the roadway and there's no way for you to look in that mirror and make sure it's safe when the tester asks you to then drive back out. Once you stop and you stop completely for that roadside stop start, you're required to place the truck in neutral, reach over and pull the parking brake, set both brakes for the tractor and the trailer, and then 
you're going to want to look at him and tell him that you understand that if I sit here more than 10 minutes, I'm required to put my three red reflective triangles out at those designated distances in front and behind my rig where I'm supposed to place them. Now, along with all of those points-based part of that test, and let me back up a moment, you can also get points assessed against you if you impede traffic or, uh, you know, impede the flow of traffic. You impede traffic too much, you're certainly going to get points, and if you impede traffic badly enough, he's going to fail you outright for that. Try to drive off from the test site without a seatbelt on, that's an instant fail. Hit a curb or run over the grass or the dirt at the edge of the road with the trailer in a turn, that's an instant fail. If you can't maintain your lane safely enough, that's for sure points, and if it's bad enough, he's going to fail you. Shift a gear on a railroad track, that's an instant fail. And that means if any of the tractor or trailer is on the track, that's an instant fail. You're allowed to run five miles an hour under the posted limit. If you're trying to run at the speed limit and you let the truck get to one mile an hour over the speed limit, he considers that speeding, you get one warning. If he's gonna warn you twice, that's an instant fail. And finally, anything that would get you a traffic citation during your road test is gonna cause you to fail instantly. You run a stop sign, you run a red light, you pass a stop school bus with its signs out, or you speed more than past that one warning. Anything that would normally get you a traffic citation is gonna cause you to fail instantly. Good luck.